<laughs> Hi. It's so it's so fun to be doing this again after so many years. Oh my god, it's crazy seeing your very fast messages. Okay, guys. I have pulled um, some questions from Twitter, a few from Instagram, but we're going to answer some on the chat as well if I run out. Um, thank you so much for your support so far. I'm so excited today. Kind of like felt like um, Christmas Eve last night. I don't know why. I mean, the album drops in two weeks, but today's special. So I'm going to start answering your questions. The first one is, do you plan on interacting more with us on social media for this new era or even bringing back fracking hell? Um, I do. Do you know what? I feel sad that I can't interact with you anymore on Instagram or on Twitter rather, because it's too crazy on there. But maybe we can do more live Q and A's. Um, I do try and comment on Instagram, but I don't know, it's hard when a lot of my interactions with fans have been in person over the years, so I've really missed seeing you guys. Um, but hopefully we're going to be touring again soon. Okay, I've got a question here from Waking the Witch. He or she or they say, in Purge the Poison, parts of the song are from Mother Nature's point of view. Are there any more instances of this on the other songs on the album? Not really. I feel like Mansworld and Purge are um, like sister songs and the rest of the album doesn't really touch on those themes in such a huge way. Behind the Aura says, knowing what you know today of other world and about your career, what is one thing you'd tell pre-family Jules Marina to prepare her for the journey ahead? Um, I would say, I would say to stop being so mean to myself. I think those early years and like the first two records of my career were very much built on self-loathing and how I struggled to accept myself. And I know that's a lot, a thing that like a lot of young people related to at the time. So that's what I would say. Stop with the self-loathing, <laughs> go to therapy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, we have a question here from Mrs. American Dreams. With the snippet we've gone from you, it seems like you sort of went back to your roots. What were the inspirations to take this musical route sonically? Uh, I don't think it was conscious. I think when I write on my own, that's like, I think people people associate that sound with a certain era, but actually that's just what I sound like when I write on my own, like on Fruit, it was fairly similar. I think the production on this record is much like wilder and more towards like rock. Um, but yeah, I think whenever I write on my own, things sound a little bit richer. <laughs> Julius World says, each single so far has overtly involved social commentary. Is this a signifier of the whole record? No, and yeah, <laughs> I think half of the records is sociopolitical, but that's something I've been doing for much of my career anyway, since, since the Family Jewels. And then half of the record is more, you know, relationship or love inspired songs, but, I think we're in an interesting time because everything feels political and we've all been kind of inspired or, or pushed to be political because of the crazy times we have been experiencing. But Oh No was like sociopolitical, Hollywood sociopolitical. It's just that they they were wrapped up in a very um, palatable bow <laughs> for my first record. <laughs> 
but this one is a lot less um a lot less filtered all right next question hmm what is one thing you hope listeners walk away with after hearing this next album that's hard I mean, I feel like I have zero control over that because we all relate to music in the same way. Um, what would I hope? I think, all right, here's a, here's a theory. I think when I write, part of what my brain is doing is getting stuff from my subconscious and lifting it up to the conscious level. And I do that in order to instigate change in my own life with things that I'm sick of about myself or, you know, things that I would like to see change in, in the outside world. Um, and for me, one of the best things about songwriting is its ability to uplift consciousness in everybody, to increase awareness. And um, for myself, whenever I write, that's the best thing about it for me so I would hope that other people would feel a little bit of that as well okay I need to do a little comment from the live chat are we getting any other music videos for this era Javi Papi um yeah we are we're getting one in two weeks um this one today is actually more of a visualizer it's not like a full-blown music video as you can see um but yeah we've got a major one coming in two weeks and you are gonna freak out Oh, you guys are so sweet. Oh, sorry, this is boring if you're watching right this second, but I'm just looking for cute comments. What's your favorite song on the album, Giovanna? Send a kiss to Brazil. Kiss to Brazil. Um, my favorite song is probably I Love You, But I Love Me More or Venus Flytrap, or Goodbye. Is Happy Loner on the album? Oh my God, Happy Loner is not. However, she is in waiting. She's gonna be, um, she's gonna be presented at some point, but this just wasn't the right home for her right now. A few people have also been asking, is there a deluxe version? which I love so much. Like, let's just see what the, the actual album's like. See if you're hungry for it afterwards, and then we can discuss <laughs> deluxe. <laughs> um, I'd love to do a deluxe, but let's see. <laughs> I love you. Any tour plans? What will it look like from Veronica Kane? Okay, I've got um, a little announcement to make. Sorry, that's my manager texting. I've got an announcement to make. Um, I am actually going to be doing a live concert for fans in the middle of the desert, live streamed on the 12th of June to celebrate the album. I've been planning it for a long time and I'm so excited about it. We're going to have a full live band, beautiful strings um, and... I can't say much more because I don't want to spoil it, but tickets are, I think they've just gone live. Um, there's various packages available and we are going to make it the best show possible. I want to showcase this record properly before I go on tour because though we do have a tour planned, um, it's probably going to be at the beginning of next year. So it's a while away. Um, all right, next question. What have we got? Are there gonna be any more iconic outfits? Of course there are. I just had a meeting actually for the desert show and we're gonna be doing something major. Okay. Hmm. Oh, Khadija Amir says, your mention of Malaysia in your song made me more patriotic. That's so sweet. Oh, I keep losing good questions. Hang on.
<laughs> Describe Venus flytrap, please, says Onyx. Um, it's really sassy. I'm sure my lyrics are going to be taken out of context and misunderstood, which I love. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very sassy, fun, bouncy, big um, song. <laughs> it's silly, but I love it so much. Um, the main lyric is, why be a wallflower when you can be a Venus flytrap? All right, some more questions coming through. What is Pandora's box about? It's about a relationship. Um, will we get a vinyl of the album, Stamos? Yes, we certainly will. You know I love vinyls. Um, it's gonna be beautiful. Totally random question. What? What's your hair tips? Your hair looks gorgeous. Thank you. What I do, guys, because I'm I'm quite low maintenance in that I don't like to spend more than 15 minutes on my hair and makeup. So I just do like a loose tongue, <laughs> quick hairspray, and then I brush it out and it kind of stays like that for a few days. But it's because I got thick hair. So it depends what your hair type is. Mm, okay, some more questions from Twitter. What are your thoughts about Bubblegum Bitch and are you satisfied going viral on TikTok? Um, I love it. I I feel very surprised whenever that happens. For some reason, I've been very fortunate with lots of songs of mine that are quite old going viral, like Hollywood, Robot, um, Bubblegum Bitch, of course, and Are You Satisfied? So... Yeah, I feel grateful. It's pretty cool to have a song that's nine years old <laughs> uh, suddenly become popular. But I always believed in Bubblegum Bitch. I tried to make a video for it at the time, but you know that just wasn't the plan of that record. It was, I, th I think, because it was um, because it was very much a U.S. radio record with Prima Donna and Heartbreaker a song like Bubblegum Bitch just didn't really fit in that campaign. And I'm really glad that it has a second life now on TikTok. Um, Math Diamanda says, what do you want to do with Pink Convertible? That's also in waiting for another home. <laughs> I love how obsessed you guys get with demos. I would be the same as well if I were a fan. Um, but yeah, they, they are going away. They just, they've got a home that's assigned to them and it will be coming soon. Hmm. Uh, what changes do you expect on the music scene on the coming years? I don't know, but the other day I was thinking about how different it was 10 years ago, for, particularly for female artists when I came out. And I'm so glad that there's a lot more space for women to evolve and not be judged for things like what they're wearing, what they're not wearing, how they look. Um, I would hope that it would evolve more in that direction and that there are more female producers and engineers Okay, Miko Lunatic says, how do you deal mentally with negativity and hateful comments during your album eras? I hope positive messages from fans are reaching you. They definitely are. I feel like Instagram's a pretty safe place. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I have been very affected in the past because this is such a new world. We're all still adapting to the technology and deciding how we want to use it. So, for example, on Electra Heart, I remember getting so much hate online saying, she, like, she's sold out and her music has become rubbish all of a sudden. <laughs> and now 
I still get that from a, you know, a small portion of people who are saying, oh my God, Electra Hart was amazing. She hasn't done any anything good since. <laughs> so, you know, it's all kind of bullshit and you just have to take it for what it is, which is sometimes people are just expressing an opinion and it's okay to have different opinions. I'm not going to produce music that people like every time, but that's my choice. Um, and, you know, there is the other side of it, which is people who are like trolling or like bullying others online just aren't happy. You just, you can't be a happy person and do that. And so you have to look for compassion, but people are just in pain. Life is fucking hard for everyone in different ways. So that's how I deal with it mentally. But I love you all and I do feel a lot of positivity and I feel so good about this record. So I, I hope that you guys really like it as well. Seeing as I, I can't like read comments anymore, I don't know what people think. So it is quite weird. It's a very different experience to a normal album campaign. All right, ask me some more questions. We got 10 minutes left. Say hi to Argentina. Hi, Argentina. Oh. Did you enjoy working with Pablo Vittar? I did. I didn't actually get to meet them, but um, I love them so much. And I love what they did on the song. How different is this album from the others? What would you say is the most original about it? Mm, I think the music actually, I think the melodies are weird as fuck and <laughs> the lyrics are pretty in your face. Um, imagery wise though, I don't know, I'm kind of just doing it as I go along. I haven't got a big master plan or anything this time for like concepts. I just do it project by project. So for example, with this um, the concert that I'm going to do in the desert, that has hits own whole vibe would you okay this is a twitter twitter question from belladonna would you rather never sing live again or never write another song <laughs> uh i wouldn't rather never sing live again i think um singing live is fun but i don't think i have a particularly like natural voice and I know people are gonna be questioning that but I I just never grew up you know singing a lot and so it's been quite hard for me to train my voice over the years to get rid of nerves when I'm singing um so I would definitely stick with writing songs forever if I had to choose between the two another one from Twitter Catherine one two three five six seven do you ever look back on outfits you wore ages ago and think, what the fuck was I doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish I had screen share capabilities on YouTube right now because there's um there's a photo of me from 2011 at Fashion Week. I had actually broken a bone in my foot the night before when I fell over in a drag club. <laughs> And I uh, was feeling a bit weird the next morning, wasn't feel feeling quite right. And so I decided to uh, put on blue tights, wooden heels. Then I put my nighttime outfit on underneath, which was this pink dress. Then on top, I put this knitted sweater with knitted mice on the shoulders. <laughs> then I um, sprayed my hair purple and then just to like, put the cherry on top I did like two little spots or like hearts or something here so that's probably my worst outfit of all time and yeah I do think what the fuck was I doing but I think on a more serious note when I've looked my worst it's usually when I'm just not feeling great mentally so I absolutely forgive myself okay next question Next question. How hard was the creative process for Ancient Dreams? 
I mean, did 2020 help you sit down and meditate about deep lyrics without sounding pessimistic? So excited to hear, I love you, but I love me more. Um, well, yeah, I, I did start writing it before the pandemic, but I suppose what we've been going through is so extreme that that is going to have an effect on you and what you absorb as an artist and then what you kind of put out and create. So it did, um, I don't know if it helped me sit down. I'm pretty good at just writing whenever I feel like it. But in terms of it being hard or easy, it was no trouble. It felt like complete joy. Kind of like with fruit. I, I always feel like if I write an album completely alone, it's just like, <sighs> there's just like a flow to it. Um, where, whereas with co-writing, it's very helpful for my craft and it challenges me, but it's, uh, it's a much more nerve wracking process for me. Um, but I need both to keep me, keep me satisfied as an artist. Okay. We got time for a few more questions. Uh, Carol Piesco first says, we can see a huge difference between man's world aesthetic and Purge the Poison aesthetic. It was also a long time between these songs. How much has your concept and thoughts about the album changed during this time? You know what, that's interesting. I didn't really, I wasn't aware of the aesthetic difference being so large, but for me, it's because they're such different songs. Like Man's World is so soft and, I don't know, textured. Purge is like, you know, it's brutal. <laughs> And it's sharp, has sharp edges and a much more raw sound. So I wasn't going to be able to do a, an aesthetic that was like similar to Man's World. Um, yeah. Yeah. The reason there was a six month gap is because COVID numbers in LA were so frightening in December and January that we, we couldn't work or like shoot anything. Okay, guys, I'm going to do a few more questions from the live chat. Okay, ask me ask me the really provocative ones now. You've got five minutes. <laughs> Would you ever collaborate with Fiona Apple? Fuck yes. But I don't think she'll ever do any collaborations. She seems super particular. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Someone said that um oh, actually I can't be bothered to say that. <laughs> Does, the, Does the song goodbye mean you're leaving the music in street? No, 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 no. I know you guys are triggered because of what I said in 2016, but I'm not leaving. I'm back. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever leave. Goodbye is a song about saying goodbye to the past. It's a beautiful song. I hope people relate to it and it helps them. Please, it's not too late for a music video for Bubblegum Bitch. We're going to be waiting. No, I can't do that. I can't like go back nine years. I don't think people didn't try. <laughs> Atlantic Records, I see you. You wanted me to do that. <laughs> it's a no. It's a no, you can't go back to the past. Describe the whole album in three words. Joyful, powerful, punchy. Do you consider this your best body of work yet? Uh, I don't know anymore. I just don't know. Cause every album I feel so happy with it. And then you get the inevitable response of varying response of people so I don't know like I loved love and fear so much but um some people just didn't think it sounded like me but for me it was the right thing to do at the time it was the right album to create so I also feel like with this one I feel very chill about it because I just made the record I wanted to make and I can't control like how people respond to it so 
I don't know if it's my best body work. You guys have got to tell me. <laughs> um, have you enjoyed working with only women for this album? I have worked with the male species as well. Um, I collaborated and, and co-produced with James Flanagan, who's done a lot of this record. But um, with Man's World, I worked with an all-female crew. Hmm. Sorry for these long silences. It's just this live chat is freaking annoying. Um, <laughs> Sana says, we want sad gal our songs, Marina. Please, 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 please. Love you, please. Don't worry. They're coming. You've got a few. Got a few on this record. Mm. Have you drawn any inspiration from older singers? My parents always tell me how you sound like their music when I play your music. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love, um, who do I love? Annie Lennox. I love Dolly Parton. Uh, I love Kate Bush. PJ Harvey. Ooh, Nicholas Lopez. Great question. What does spirituality mean to you? To me, spirituality means um, believing that we're all interconnected and that we are all part of one big, I was going to say one big universe, but I don't know. I, I have some theories. <laughs> um, I think we're all part of consciousness and I think this is, a conversation for another time, probably. What headspace are you mentally at now? Well, I'm quite busy. Um, and I'm trying to be healthy because I've had some health issues that mean I've been very tired on and off. Um, but I'm feeling pretty good. I'm starting rehearsals on Friday for this live concert and yeah i'm feeling pretty good thank you for asking okay i'm going to do two more questions two more questions hmm Your thoughts on Taylor Swift, love her, loved folklore, huge fan. Did you design the merch of this era by yourself? Um, yeah, I have. I mean, I've, I think I've probably done that since Fruit and I definitely directed a lot of it on Electra Heart. But yeah, the merch is like pretty sick and it's gonna come soon. Okay, one more question. It would be nice if we could chat, like, you know how on Instagram Lives you can have a conversation? That would be cool. Maybe we can hook that up one day because it's weird me just, like, being in a room talking to myself. <laughs> I know that's what live streams are, but... Oh, Vladimir says, what do you think about capitalism? <laughs> capitalism. Um... It's a good question. I, well, I don't think I should really be talking about politics in that way. Because I just, I don't know enough. However, I do know that being like, I think the results of capitalism have been detrimental. And that's what I mean when I sing in Purge, cap capitalism made us poor. I think there were like a few people saying oh that's easy for you to say you're an artist blah 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 and I didn't mean it like that I meant it that capitalism has made us spiritually poor that we're we're all kind of sucked into this thing of feeling like we need things all the time we need to buy things and we need beauty products and we need to get things done to ourselves and I just 
I feel conflicted about that. Um, but I don't think the answer is being black and, you know, black and white, like going to the extremes. So those are a few thoughts on capitalism. <laughs> Why can't I stop answering questions? Hi, beautiful. When are you coming to Mexico? God, I hope it's 2022. I've asked for it. I just want you guys to know I have asked. I've requested Mexico. Oh, Yorgos says, what are your hopes for ancient dreams in a modern land? I would love to see your work getting more recognized, honestly. I feel like we've done it. Like, We've done it, guys. What else do we want? We have an amazing fan base and community. And I just, I don't know. I couldn't wish for anything more in my life. I've got artistic freedom and I've got personal freedom and independence. And that's the most important thing to me. So in terms of recognition, I don't know. I think we've got like cultural, um, I think people, particularly fandoms, think that, their like version of success is aligned with our cultural values, which is, you know, getting high charting records or like selling loads of things. But for me, I don't know, success is so much broader. It's like having the freedom to say yes and no to things or, you know, being able to feel like you're directing your own life. And maybe that's why I haven't had that kind of mainstream success. Um, not success, mainstream recognition that you guys so sweetly crave for me because it's never been a goal of mine. And I think, you know, whatever you're aiming for, you end up attracting. So I have the career that I've always dreamed of and I have you guys to thank for it, truly. Um, all right, I'm five minutes over. <laughs> so I'm going to say goodbye for now, but Let's do it again soon. Let's figure out a way to incorporate fans actually talking to me live. Um, I love you guys. I really mean it when I say I'm so grateful. And um, we have a very unique community and fan base. I hope you love this record. And I will see you on the 12th when I'm doing my show. Have a great day or great evening. Bye. <laughs>